problem is like this before going to the problem i will discuss one thing that i told that one dimensional steady state heat transfer truly happens when the area normal to the heat flux is not varying in the direction of heat flow but sometimes by some approximation we use one dimensional analysis for such a area varying substance let us consider a tapered rod like this where the boundary condition is such that this face is kept at some temperature t1 this face is t2 and t1 is greater than t2 sometimes the problem is specified by insulating the lateral surfaces but what is done that here if x is in this direction or you can take at the middle axis same thing x then we tell that t is a function of x and sometimes take this problem as a one dimensional problem what is the meaning of that when the area varies like this in the direction of heat flow in fact t becomes also a function of y but if the area variation is not much or the boundary conditions are such the lateral surface and the end surface says we can neglect the variation in the y direction that means cross sectional variation and we can consider almost a uniform temperature the way we have considered for a plane wall and that is only a function of x where the heat is flowing by virtue of the main potential difference t1 and t2 or we prescribe the problem this way that though truly it is a two dimensional heat conduction t is also a function of y truly truly t is a function of x and y maybe a weak function of y but it is a function of both x and y we consider in area average temperature and that area average temperature as a function of x whatever may be in both the cases how do we perceive but it is a function of x so that it is an area average temperature or a constant temperature neglecting its variation but we cannot neglect the variation of area so therefore we cannot write the equation d square t dx square zero because we know the equation is in this form the general equation is in this form k a dt dx plus qg into a is zero this is the basic equation where from does it come your general energy general heat conduction equation is not there a coming into this because there we have considered plane area now here if you derive this i think it will be always better i suggest to you that for steady one dimensional heat conduction better we always derive the basic equation relating the temperature variation by taking a small element the way we derive the heat conduction equation in three dimension taking a small element at a distance x where the area is ax now ax why i am telling that this a is a function of x ax now i write ax i derive this equation ax which is a function of x it is changing the heat flux is qx and we consider the element of thickness that means this one delta x so therefore the heat which is going out q at x plus delta x now i write by fourier heat conduction equation at that section ax at a distance x qx is 
minus k a x d t d x. This t is a temperature which is cross sectionally uniform or a cross sectionally average temperature. We can write by the expansion in Taylor series q x plus d x is q x that is minus k a x d t d x plus this quantity q x d d x of minus change k a d t d x over a distance delta x, but this is an infinite series we have to take higher order term h o t I am writing higher order term in delta x that means delta x square by 2 delta x cube by 3 you know the Taylor order Taylor series and since delta x is extremely small in the limit tends to 0 so these terms are being neglected. So therefore from the energy balance if we consider at that section q g is the heat generation then definitely I can write q x plus del x what is coming out from that small element is nothing but q x plus the amount of energy that is generated that is q g into a x into delta x this is my so therefore derivation of general heat conduction equation or for one dimensional simple heat conduction equation for your purpose the procedure is same to make an element take the energy balance by describing the heat flux by Fourier heat conduction equation and in energy balance we have not considered the change in internal energy because it is at steady state that means energy coming in and energy going out must balance with the energy generated so that no energy may be accumulated or depleted within the element. So if you write this and if you make this then you get this equation you write this q x plus d x this side so this this cancels so this plus this is in the left side this in the this this cancels so this becomes equal to q g a x delta x. So ultimately by substituting these two you get this. So that means our starting point even if the area varies along with the thermal conductivity is this which in a very special case I can rub this now in a very special case becomes that if q g is 0 that means there is no heat generation if q g is 0 then this becomes d d x of k a x d t d x that means we see that without heat generation this quantity is 0 and if we take k constant thermal conductivity does not vary then we come to this conclusion d d x of a x d t d x 0 that means still we cannot say that d t d x is constant temperature is linear because we are considering the variation of area. But if the area variation is not there that means the plane wall then it comes out and d square t d x square 0 then only we get a linear temperature variation there will be problems where a area variation will be there that means if the area varies how do you tackle the one dimensional heat conduction equation clear this can be also appreciated that if we consider the variation with y how I am telling that mean temperature comes into consideration let me do this way that you can be satisfied this also that this is we have already considered a mean temperature where from this comes let us consider a section at x. Now if we consider that t is a function of x and y this is an integrated form 
Now, if I have to find out the value of Qx, that means at this section, what is the value of Qx? Then what I do, let me consider this is h, the height at that section. And we consider a unit width of the rod perpendicular to the board. Now, since t is a varying with y, so dt dx will change from y, y to y, this is not same along the cross section. We allow this variation, then what we do? We take a element dy in this height, whose area is dy times this width. Let this width be L, width perpendicular to the board be L. So, if we tell this the heat flux through this elemental area dy into L, not h into L, that is ax, that is ax, not that, then we can write del qx is equal to what? Minus k L dy into del t del x at that particular y because t is a function of y also. So, del t del x will vary from point to point. I take an element t y so that I can integrate. That means q x is nothing but the integration of del q x. Now, to integrate this, let me take an axis. A symmetry axis is x here, so that plus h by 2 to minus h by 2. What we do? We do this one minus integration of k l dy del t del x minus h by 2 to plus h by 2. Clear? L is the width in this direction. Now, if we consider k not to be a function of y, only t is a function of y. k may be a function of x, may not be a function of x. Rather, I take k out minus k l, then what I write? minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 del t del x dy. Now, if t is a continuous function of both x and y, which is supposed to be there in a physical system without any discontinuity, then I can take this integration out of this, I saw the differentiation out of this integration. That means qx is equal to minus kl del del x of integration of t, because this is del del x of t, t dy minus h by 2 to plus h by 2. That means I can take the differentiation out of the integration. And this is nothing but a mean temperature. If I define now a mean temperature Tm at any cross section, is a cross sectional average mean temperature which I can define T L D Y from minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 divided by h. So, therefore, if I define a mean temperature like this, if I define a mean temperature like this, then Qx becomes is equal to minus K L H into del T M del X. And in that case, when you have defined a mean temperature cross sectionally average, then del X will not be there, that will be simply ordinary differential and L into H is the A x area at that section. That means, when I represent the heat flux in a 
variable cross section at minus k a x d t d x. This we consider that t is either some cross sectionally average temperature which is a function of x only or we discard the variation over the cross section. So, until and unless you appreciate this, it will be difficult to understand that variation of area how I will take care of. That means, you have to start from this equation. If you start from the equation d square t dx square equals to 0, you are gone because that is not the governing equation that does not take care of the variation of area in the direction of heat flow. Truly speaking, this is not a two dimensional heat transfer problem here t is a function of both x and y. If the area variation is not great or not large and the boundary conditions are such, then only we can do that. Okay? So, after this now I will solve some interesting problems.